Over the course of a five-month period in 1973-1974, the city of San Francisco was under siege. A string of terrifyingly, seemingly random shootings paralyzed the city with fear. The only thing the police knew for sure, all the shooting victims were white and the shooters were black. The violence began in October 1973. A 28-year-old woman named Frances Rose was shot repeatedly in her car by a random assailant in San Francisco. The following month, a 53-year-old grocery store owner was found shot dead in the store's bathroom. Until the end of 1973, residents of San Francisco lived in fear as the random attacks continued. A man was shot in a telephone booth while making a phone call. Art Agnos, who would become the mayor of San Francisco in 1988, was shot twice in the back but survived. A 31-year-old woman was shot and killed walking down the street. The case became known as the Zebra Murders, not because of the racial overtones of the murders, but because of the name of the radio channel the police used during the investigation. San Francisco police set up a dragnet across the city, stopping all young black men out on the street. If the men were deemed not to be a threat, they were given a zebra card that they could show police if and when they were stopped again for interrogation. The murder stopped suddenly and without explanation as the calendar changed from 1973 to 1974. Over the next four months, residents of the Bay Area began to relax their guard, believing that the random terror might be over. They were wrong. On April 1st, the zebra murders started again. Thomas Rainwater, 19, and Linda Story, 21, were shot while walking down the street. Rainwater died from his injuries. Story survived. The attack had all the hallmarks of the zebra case, a lightning-quick random attack carried out by a black man with a 32 pistol who immediately fled the scene. April 14th saw another attack. Two more people were shot and wounded while standing on a street corner. Two days later, another murder. A 23-year-old man was shot and killed while rummaging around in his parked car. This second wave of zebra murders brought San Francisco to the edge of panic again. Who was behind the random attacks? When would they be caught? Was anyone safe? The men behind the attacks turned out to be a group of radical Muslims who called themselves the Death Angels. Manuel Moore, Larry Green, Jesse Lee Cooks, and J.C.X. Simon were all black men in their 20s. They all belonged to the Nation of Islam and were hell-bent on killing white people and sparking a race war. After the final zebra murder in April 1974, a man named Anthony Harris came forward with information. Harris was not a good Samaritan trying to help out the police. He was trying to save his own skin after he recognized himself in a police sketch that was widely circulated. Harris met the police and told them that while he didn't commit any of the zebra attacks, he was present at several of the shootings. The police knew Harris was telling the truth because he relayed details that they had not released to the public. Police agreed not to press charges against Anthony Harris and to provide new identities for him and his family in exchange for information about the zebra murders. On May 1, 1974, the police conducted raids that resulted in the arrests of seven men associated with the murder spree. Some of the men were released, but Manuel Moore, Larry Green, Jesse Lee Cooks, and J.C.X. Simon were all charged with multiple counts of first-degree murder and attempted murder. Anthony Harris took the stand against his former associates and provided day after day of grisly details regarding the shootings. After a lengthy trial, Moore, Green, Cooks, and Simon were all found guilty in May 1976. At the time, the trial was the longest in California's history. All four men were sentenced to life in prison. The official body count to the zebra murder spree was 15 dead, 10 wounded. One criminologist, however, believes that the Death Angels may have killed more people in the early to mid-1970s than all the other serial killers operating during that period combined. There are some who believe the Death Angels may have been responsible for as many as 70 murders. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Also, consider subscribing for more videos like this.